The cutting process of a neckwear pattern is done in such a way that we cut the fabrics on a bias. This particular pattern is a one-way cutting, which means that the design is engineered in such a way that it can only be cut in one direction. The cutting of the fabrics on a bias allow for the fabrics to give. Offering multiple shapes, length, lengths, widths, and models of ties requires that we be able to make our patterns in such a way that we have very good utilization. This marking process, you'll be able to see very clearly just how effective the utilization is with the limited amount of excess fabric that you can see after the patterns are laid on the group of ties to be cut. A ties can be grouped and cut so long as the fabrics are of the same width and the ties are going to be made in the same shape for the same customer. We're now joining the three pieces of the tie together. This is very critical to making sure the pieces fit together properly so that the tie will hang correctly after it's completed. The content tab has to be placed precisely in order to be located correctly once the tipping is sewn on the tie. The margins used for sewing the tip lining on the large and small end of the tie very critical to the appearance of the tie on the back of the large and small ends once the tie is completed. This process is called the pocket turn and press. What this really is, is turning the tip lining inside out that has been sewn on the reverse to make the margin on the back of the tie. This process has to be done to both the large and small end of the tie. Once the pockets have been pressed, we'll then what we call piece press the tire to press the seams that join the three pieces of the tie together. At this point, we check the length of the tie to make sure it meets our standards. Standard for a regular length tie is 57 inches. The standard for an extra long is 62. In our business, we do a lot of special makes, which may require a length varying anywhere from uh, a very short tie to ties as long as 70 or 72 inches long depending on the particular customer. This is the pinning process, the beginning of this hand slip stitching process. This is where the shell fabric is actually hand fit to the particular inner lining. This is the real creation of a handmade necktie. Once the pinning process has been completed, we'll begin the hand stitching. There's approximately 100 hand stitches in the length of a tie. The hand slip stitch is the lifeline of the tie. This process allows the tie to have flexibility, to move and to relax after being worn all day, knotted and unknotted. The quality of the fabric, the quality of the inner lining in this process really make a difference in the way a handmade tie drapes and the way that it returns to shape after being worn all day. The pressing process is very critical to the result of the finished product. Overpressing can create a shine and creases in the tie and underpressing 
or leave the tie wrinkled. One of the marks of a quality tie is to have each end closed with a hand sewn bar tack. Less expensive ties would have a machine sewn bar tack which is just several loops of thread. The bar tack we're using here is called a hand wrapped bar tack because the thread is wrapped around the needle several times to make the decorative stitch. The self loops we use on our ties are attached in the center in the slip stitch as well as on each corner. This holds the loop securely. The final touch to a truly handmade tie is the hand sewing of the label, whether it be one of our labels or a customer's label.